You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Today, I'm going to be preaching on a message I call Divine Encounter. And I'll be speaking in particular about the woman with the issue of blood. Turn your Bible to John chapter 14, verse 6. I'm going to be speaking about divine encounters. What are divine encounters? Divine encounters are experiences sent by God that bring reality and the awareness of God to us. So when you talk about a divine encounter, you are talking about an experience that God himself brings your way to make you aware of him and to make him very real to you. For many people, God is only somebody we read about or somebody we hear about. But God wants to give you a divine encounter. A divine encounter will shift you to the reality of God. It will make you know that God is real and he is alive. It provides the necessary convictions that will underpin your faith. Encounters are a great tool, but they can also bring a lot of error. And so I'm just going to quickly just show you a few things and give you guidelines for divine encounters. And that is why, because they can lead people to error, they must be judged by some guidelines so that all of us can be safely guided. A divine encounter must lead you to the Father through Jesus Christ. And that is why I'm reading John chapter 14, verse 6. If you are there, let's all read it together. One, two, go. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you see Jesus Christ make a very emphatic statement that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then he makes a statement. He says, no man, nobody can come to the Father except by me. So if you want to encounter the Father, you want to meet God, there is only one way you can enter safely. You see, there are many ways that if you follow, you will encounter the spiritual. But if you want to encounter the Father and Jesus Christ, there is only one way. If you try to encounter the Spirit through any other way, you will enter into the spiritual realm, but you will not end up in the domain of the Father. That is why people can go to a malam. That is why people can go to the beach and chant. That is why people can go to a fetish priest because all those things will take you into an encounter with the spiritual, but not to the Father. This year is a year of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to clearly identify ourselves, who we are, what we believe in. We only go to the Father through Jesus Christ. That is the only safe way. So you find somebody who says, eh, Pastor, I went to fast and I, an angel came to me. You see, you've got to ask yourself a few questions. Oh, Pastor, I went to some prophet and he prophesied to me. You've got to ask yourself a few questions. Because if you want to encounter the Father, you can only, it says that no man cometh to the Father but by me. So don't be impressed when somebody begins to prophesy. Don't be impressed when somebody begins to tell you things about the Spirit because 
it can be from a wrong source, even though it's true. Now, I need to clear out all those things because I've seen people who have fasted and have gone into error. I've seen people who have been prophesied to their in error. So the fact that you have a revelation, remember there were some ladies who were prophesying and Paul was grieved in his spirit and cast out the spirit out of them. He said, this is an evil spirit. What they were saying was true, but the spirit was evil. And look at what they were saying. They were actually following Apostle Paul and saying that this is a man of God. I mean, who doesn't want to hear that? But the spirit was wrong. In these last days, we need to be very careful. I've seen people very intent on error. And it's important that we understand that there are parameters to judge divine encounters. So divine encounters must be consistent with the character of Christ. Wow. When somebody says, I've had a divine encounter, it must be consistent with the character of Christ and must be consistent with his pattern and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So scripture provides a roadmap into possible experiences and supernatural encounters. You must have supernatural encounters, but they are not a substitute for the word of God. So you don't build your life just on encounters. You build your life on the truth and the doctrine of the word of God. So if you say you have a supernatural encounter, that is inconsistent with doctrine. So somebody says, Pastor, I was asleep and I had a dream. And in the dream, God told me to walk around a building. And when I finished walking around the building, then he asked me to start a church. That's how I got born again. You see, the only way you, <laughs> you can get to the Father and the only way you can call yourself a child of God is when you are born again. So you may have a supernatural encounter. It is not consistent with doctrine. It is not consistent with what Jesus Christ preached. So as we become more spiritual, we'll begin to hear and see and receive touches from God. That is why, you see, God himself will not do anything out of his word. So no matter what God does, he will always come back to his word. And when he wants to do something, he will first send his word. So I believe in supernatural encounters. The fact that I'm born again means that I've encountered a supernatural encounter. But it is not a substitute for the word of God. So if somebody says, I have a dream, somebody says, God told me. And in the last days, there'll be a lot of false prophets who say all sorts of things, but we measure it by the word. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because of these last days, there's a lot of pressure on so-called men of God to prophesy. And so you can easily attend a meeting where it's like there's a lot of prophecy, there are a lot of miracles, there are a lot of things that are happening. But you find out that, listen carefully, it does not confirm that that person is from God. See, what makes you walk on the right path is the word. So I want the man of God to teach the word, not just come and say, today I'm not going to teach the word. If you hear statements like that, no. When you gather as a church, one of the first things that represents God in the beginning was the word. So there must be a strong emphasis on the word. It is through the word of God that God expresses himself. Everything was made by the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. So we will not accept anything that is inconsistent with doctrine and out of the character of Jesus Christ. So when God brings you to himself, one of the first things God will do is that he will first make you into his character. God will first work on your character before any other thing. Let me give you a very sharp distinction between the works of idols and evil and the work of God. You see, when you contact the spiritual, you will access power. But one way to determine whether the power is of God or is not of God is that God will also work on your character. So one of the things you should avoid is just coming into a, a meeting and just giving something but you don't want your character to improve. God will always work on your character. Hmm. And if you want to have a cheap way into the spirit, you just give things. So you find out that idols, you go to the beach, you go and do something, you present a goat, you present a cup. It's like once you do that, it's okay. You'll get what you want, but he will never work on your character. The clear distinction about God is that he wants to make you like him. So he will work on your character. I was talking about people who just come and prophesy, and then it's like signs and wonders. And sometimes you find out that when you come to church, and maybe there's a teaching of the word, for some people, there's a disconnect between them and the church service. 
So as long as we are focusing on the word, we're having a Bible study, you are not very interested till you come to the point where the man of God begins to lay hands and people are falling down and things like that. You see, the first sign that you are with God is that you love his word. You will love his word before signs and wonders because God encounters you every day through his word. He will speak with you through his word. He will guide you through his word. So, you come to church, you are not interested in studying the word. When the preaching is going on, you are distracted. All you are waiting for is for a man of God to come, say, now, stand up, and then all of a sudden you are alive. No, the word, the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The divine encounter, number two, is not to promote the man or the medium. So when there's a divine encounter, God is not going to share his glory with another person. So the focus is never on the vessel or the medium. So for example, God may use a handkerchief, but don't shift the focus to the handkerchief. God may use oil, don't shift the focus to the oil. God may use a human being, but don't shift the focus to a human being. It is always God. If you want divine encounters and not to be straight, and not to be allowed yourself to be taken out of God's will, you need to understand these guidelines. The focus will always be God through Jesus Christ. So John the Baptist, he says that I might decrease, that he might increase. You want genuine encounters? Focus on God through Jesus Christ. Number three, the aim of a divine encounter is to draw you to God first and work out in you the character and the will of the Lord. He will place a demand on your character too. And remember, when there is God, all he comes to do is to save and improve lives. God is not just interested in power. He's not interested in money or statistics. In fact, the Bible said God was revealing himself to Moses. And he revealed himself in a still, small voice. Not the thunder, not the fire, not the lightning, but in a still, small voice. You see, God's voice will always bring you peace. It may be still, but that's the voice of God. So in the midst of the noise and the excitement and the crowd, listen to that voice. Number five, Hebrews chapter one, verse one. Ultimately, God reveals himself through Jesus Christ and no other person. Let's all read Hebrews chapter one, verse one. One to go. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So in the previous times, how did God speak? He spoke unto our fathers by the prophets. But look at verse 2. He has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. What is God saying to us? That he will reveal himself through Christ. He used a lot of people, but in these last days, he has spoken unto us through Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and by whom he also made the worlds. Don't let your faith shift from God to a man. Don't let your faith shift from God into a vessel. Don't let your faith shift from God to a place. Our faith is in God. I know God may use a dream. God may speak to you. God may give you an encounter, but remember, it must be consistent with the nature of Christ. It must be consistent with character of Christ. I don't want to get into too much theology, but I want to say to you that there are many voices, but the sheep must learn how to hear his voice and not any other voice. Not a stranger's voice. Because strange voices will talk to you. There are some things you grow into. When I'm out of the country and somebody calls me, because of the relationship I have with the person, I'm able to say who it is. So the more you spend time with God, church, not with a person, the more you spend time with God, the more you meditate on his word, the more you know and hear his voice so that you will not be derailed by any other voice. And I'll tell you, the Bible says that the devil comes like a wolf, but he wears a sheep's clothing. So you hear a voice, you think it's God. It's not God because it is not consistent with the character and the doctrine of Christ Jesus. Now, why must you have divine encounters? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. Why does God give you divine encounters and experiences? 
It's good to read the Bible, so let's all read it together. One, two, go. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Save who? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Save who? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, verse 3. This is Apostle Paul talking. And he says, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I mean, Paul has revelations more than many people. Paul has had encounters more than many people. But he says, listen, my focus was on Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he says, I didn't use enticing words and show you who I am. I didn't place focus on myself, even though I'm the great apostle Paul. I didn't talk about my experiences with the Lord for you to believe in me. He says, I didn't do all those things. What I did was I preached in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. One of the things I pray for as a church is that we will get to a point where we'll see a demonstration of God and his power. That every time we gather, there'll be such a divine encounter that you will get to the point you will know. That no, God is not just a storybook I'm reading. God is not just somebody telling me about him. But there is a demonstration and I, I have seen God and I know him because you need that conviction. May God prove himself to all of us in ways that only he can. May you begin to have personal encounters and experiences with God that will root you in the faith. Now look at the verse 5, which is the key thing. Wow. Why is Paul preaching the demonstration of the spirit and of the power? Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Stop there. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. It means that if there's no demonstration of the spirit and of power, what happens is that people come to the faith but their faith begins to be shifted onto a man. They talk more about their pastor. They talk more about their prophets. They talk more about the signs and wonders. You see, they, they can't talk about Jesus Christ because they haven't really known him. Why are people not interested in going out and preaching the gospel? Why people don't have a testimony about an encounter with Christ? Why aren't people ready to go out and convince the world? We are witnesses. Because many people may not have had an encounter with Christ. They go to church. They do a lot of things in church. But one of the missing things is an encounter with Jesus Christ. I'll tell you a secret. There is no way you can encounter Jesus Christ and ever be the same. You may be the hardened sinner. You may be the worst criminal. But I'll tell you something. If you meet this man called Jesus Christ, you will never be the same. So he says that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of men. That, oh, this guy, because he's gone to school, this guy, because he speaks good English, that, that man of God, because he has a big house, but it will stand in the power of God. Something must shift in this church. That our faith will shift to the power of God. Something must shift in this generation. That our faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. But in the power of God. And it's one of the things I want all of us to pray about. Encounter with the power of God. Our faith will not rest in the wisdom of man, but it will be in the power of God. Father, give me a demonstration of your spirit and of your power. You know me. You know what when I see and when what I encounter will convince me that I'm not just going to a church service because I like somebody or because it's a routine, but I've encountered the power of God. Many people seem to live the Christian life on borrowed experiences from other people. I know you have read the Bible and you have heard a lot of stories and other people's testimony. But what you need is a personal encounter and an experience. The average believer has to depend on the confidence of a pastor or a prophet or even a corporate meeting to be able to believe things about God. Because today, very few people read their Bible themselves. Very few people. One of the errors we must quickly correct as a body of Christ is a situation where you go to a church and somebody's not preaching from the Bible, but he's holding somebody's book. And all he's doing is reading from the book. Run away. Never ever go to a place where what they preach is from another book. Why don't they want you to read your Bible? What are they afraid of? Get the Bible. Get the word. Get the word. Build your life and your doctrine 
in consistency with the word of God, not another person's ideas. We read books fine, but we are not going to build our lives around somebody's book, his thoughts. No. Get back to the word. If there's a drive I want to bring in this church, it's a drive where every day, every morning, you read your Bible. You study your word. You study your word. You will encounter God through the word. Not just through prayer, through the word. Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42 verse 5. Are you there? Let's all read it together. One, two, go. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes see thee. No, 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 come on, say it again. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes see thee. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. You do not just depend on somebody's story of what you have heard, but you have now encountered him because you've seen him. I want to ask you, you see, when we got born again in those days, the question people asked us was, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Because there was a certain attachment about personal. He's Lord, we know that. But as he come into your life, have you experienced him as your personal Savior? I know you can say, yes, he's the Savior of the world. But have you encountered him as your personal Savior? Has he proven himself to you? Has he revealed himself to you? Have you had a unique interaction with Jesus as Savior? Somebody who loves you so much and will do everything to pay the ultimate price so that you can live. God is a maker of men. And every time God comes into your life, you will begin to evolve into a higher dimension or a higher version than you are now. You will be superior in grace and in wisdom now. So it is good to study your faith. Faith comes by hearing, I know. But there are higher dimensions of faith than hearing. We have heard but now we have seen. No, which one will convince you more? What you have heard or you have seen. And remember, you become an eyewitness. You witness it with your eye. In fact, when you go to court, they tell you that hearsay evidence is not evidence. <laughs> have you heard that before? Do you know hearsay? It means you heard it. Then they'll ask you, did you see it? Because if you just heard it, you can't come and testify. Were you there? Did you see it with your own eyes? There is something I've seen. Jesus Christ. I've seen his nail-pierced, scarred hands. I have felt his love die for me. I have felt his sacrifice on the cross for me. He has revealed himself to me that, Bernard, I want you saved. I didn't just hear it. I had an experience. I had an encounter. And there are too many people who are operating on a very low level. Hearsay evidence. Acts chapter 9 verse 5. When you have an encounter, you will enhance your spiritual growth and intimacy. And the influence and impact of this experience will be significant on your life. God works through encounters to create awareness and to convict people of who he is. And the example of Paul on the road to Damascus is a very classic example. So Paul is a murderer. Paul is a blasphemer. This is somebody who is totally against God. But something is about to change him. Father, in the name of Jesus... Let something touch my life. Give me an encounter that will totally change and transform me beyond arguments. So Paul saw Jesus Christ and he fell down on his knees and he said, Who art thou, Lord? You see, a few minutes ago, he was condemning everybody around the same person. But when he had an encounter, nobody had to take him to theology school. Nobody had to take him for new believer school. Nobody has to teach him anything. He realized that there is somebody I've met, his Lord. You know, this situation of assurance of salvation, I don't know where it's, it came from. Why must somebody assure you of an experience you've had? No, think about it carefully. And I'm not belittling New Believers School or anything, but something you have seen, something you have encountered, something you have experienced, why do you need somebody to come and convince you again and again and again and again? Immediately he says, Lord, who art thou? And the Lord spoke to him. This is a new convert. I told you about the woman at the well. She didn't need anybody to tell her anything. She just ran back and said, I've had an experience. Come and see. Come and see. We need to hear from you. You see, there must be something that touches your life. There must be something that revolutionizes your relationship. Who are thou? And then he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. 
a personal interaction, a personal unique experience. God didn't show himself like this to everybody, but he knows everybody and how the person will eventually get to know. And he wants to give you that experience. All of a sudden, somebody who was a hardened criminal, after that experience, all of a sudden says, I surrender, I surrender. All over scripture, we see people who have had personal encounters with Jesus Christ. Not everybody needed a physical healing or a provision of food or a certain dimension of miracle. But some of them, all they needed to convince them was an answer to questions of life. So if you take Nicodemus, for example, one of the leaders of Israel, when he came to Jesus, he didn't want money. He didn't want a job. He didn't want a husband. He didn't want a car. All he wanted was he had some doubts within him. And he engaged Jesus in a conversation. And Jesus answered those questions to a point where he says, No. So you may come to church. You don't need physical healing. But you need answers to life's perplexing questions. And as you come to church, you begin to hear God speaking to you. And you begin to find answers to questions you've lived with for long. And all of a sudden, Nicodemus, who doesn't even understand born again, who is a devout person going to church, becomes a pillar of of our faith. Why? Because he met Jesus Christ and he didn't live the same. You see, don't judge a church service by people just falling down or people just having a certain healing. That may be one way, but that is not the only way people have an encounter. Look at the woman at the well. She didn't need a physical healing. She didn't need a job. She didn't need money. There was something within her that was troubling her. And all she needed was somebody to talk to her and give her living water which if she drank will never thirst again. Because of that woman's interaction with Jesus Christ, all of us as a church know about worship in John chapter 4 verse 24 when Jesus said that the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We'll continue next week. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hello precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Manor, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the word of God in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Me Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power.